3.1 Derivatives of Polynomials and Exponential Functions So we're finally going to learn an easy way to take the derivative. The power rule saves us so much time and energy. It says if n is any real number, then d dx of x to the n, the derivative of x to the n power, equals n times x to the n minus 1. Note that this only works if we have x to the n power and taking the derivative of that. Normal line to a curve at point P is the line through P that is perpendicular to the tangent line at P. So basically, in order to find the slope of the normal line, we'll find the slope of the tangent line, and then we'll take the negative reciprocal to find the slope of the normal line. So here are just some examples. Um, if f of x equals x to the n, then using the power rule, the derivative is just going to be 6 times x to the 6 minus 1, which is 5th. In part b, if y equals x to the 1,000th, then y prime equals 1,000 x to the 999. So here we're just trying to use a little bit different notation. If y equals t to the fourth, then dy dt equals 4t to the third. This is the same thing as saying y prime. This is giving us a little more information because this is saying the derivative of y with respect to t, meaning t is a variable. And here we can just say d dr of r cubed. That's saying take the derivative with respect to r of the function r cubed. And that's just 3r squared. So this introduces you to the important notation that we need to be familiar with. So now let's just do a couple. Um, in part a, to differentiate, take the derivative. We first want to express this as a power. Right now, we have a fraction. But we can express this as x to the negative 2 power. And when we do that, we take the derivative, applying the power rule. And we get negative 2x to the negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. In part b, again, we want to express this as a power. So let's say this is x to the 2 thirds. And so the derivative is just going to be 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third. Here we're just saying that the derivative of a constant times a function is the constant times the derivative of the function, meaning d dx of c times f of x is equal to c times the derivative of f of x. We can take a constant out since it's not um, a variable. So in these examples, we can say that this is the same thing as 3 times the derivative of x to the fourth, which is the same thing as 3 times 4x cubed which is just 12x cubed. In the next example, we can just say we're doing the same thing as negative d dx of x. And that is going to be negative. The derivative of x is just going to be 1, because we have x to the 1 power would be 1 times x to the 0, which is just 1. Now, you do not need to write these steps out. I just wrote them now. You're going to just do them in your head in the future. But that's why we can do what we're doing. So here are the sum and difference rules. Um, if f and g are both differentiable, meaning you can take the derivative of both f and g, then the derivative of the sum is the same thing as the sum of the derivatives. Same thing for a difference, meaning that we can just take the derivative of each of these parts. So I'm just going to write it all out for the first time, but you never need to write this all out. Now 
which is going to be equal to 8x to the 7th plus 12 times 5 is 60, x to the 4th minus 4 times 4 is 16x cubed plus 10 times 3 is 30x squared minus 6 times 1. And then the derivative of 5, the derivative of a constant, is just 0. And so that is our answer. Where is the tangent line horizontal if we have the function y equals x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 4? Well, what does a horizontal line look like? That is a line with a slope of 0. So horizontal line means that the slope is 0 meaning we want y prime to be 0. So we're trying to say where is y prime 0? First we should find y prime. 4x cubed minus 6 times 2 is 12x. The derivative of 4, remember, is just 0. That's a constant. And so we're saying where is the derivative 0? Let's just pull out a 4x, which is in common. So we get when x equals 0 or x squared equals 3. In other words, x equals positive or negative root 3. We have horizontal tangent lines. when x equals 0 or x equals plus or minus root 3. If we wanted to find the actual points where we have the horizontal tangents, all we do is we know it is at x equals 0 is our first point. What is the y-coordinate associated with that? I'm going to go ahead and plug that back into our original equation, not our derivative equation because we want the point on the line. So that's going to be 0 minus 0 plus 4. Our next point would be at root 3. If we stuck that in, we should get negative 5. And similarly, if we plug in negative root 3, we will also get negative 5. Exponential functions are pretty neat. And here is why. So let's try and take the derivative of an exponential function, f of x equals a to the x. So let's go ahead and use our limit law because this is not, you see, this is not, um, we can't use our power rule here. We don't have x to a power, so we can't use our power rule. So let's try and see if we can find another rule for exponential functions. So let's use our limit laws. Um, f prime of x equals the limit as, x, as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Remember that. And so let's just use our function y equals a to the x. And so we get a to the x plus h minus a to the x all over h. So by using our exponent rules, remember that a to the x times a to the h will be the same thing as a to the x plus h. Okay, so let's do that. And then we can factor out an a to the x in this step right here. Now notice that this factor, a to the x, actually does not depend on the h at all. So when we're finding the limit as h approaches 0, this a to the x is not impacted by that. So we can take it out in front of the limit. So we were over here at this step on the last slide, and we just decided that we were going to take a to the x out, and so we're left with this. And if you look at this, is this not the same thing as f prime of 0? So what we're saying here, and what's so cool about the exponential function is it's saying that the rate of change of any exponential function is proportional to the function itself because f prime of x, if f of x equals a to the x, is equal to a to the x times f prime of zero. This leads us 
to this definition, e is a number such that the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the h minus 1 all over h equals 1. Of all the exponential functions, y equals a to the x, the function f of x equals e to the x is the one whose tangent at 0, 1 has a slope f prime of 0 that is exactly 1. And so you can see that we have graphed here, we have y equals 2 to the x, y equals 3 to the x, and then y equals e to the x, of course, is going to be in between those two. And you see that through this graph here, the slope at the point 0, 1 is exactly 1. The slope at any point x is just going to be e to the x. So that's the really cool thing about y equals e to the x. The derivative of the natural exponential function is just itself. Really, really cool. Now please, never, never, never do a power rule on e to the x. Remember that power rule can only be applied if we have a function of the form x to the n power. This is not a function of the form x to the n power. Do not. I repeat, do not apply the power rule to e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. It should be one of our favorite functions to take the derivative of. Okay, so if we have f of x equals e to the x minus x, find f prime of x and find f prime prime. So f prime of x, remember the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, and the derivative of x is just 1. If we take the derivative once more, we now just look at our f prime function, and we take the derivative once more. That's how you find f double prime. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So our answer is just e to the x. Let's just talk really quickly about um, what we can analyze. We just found that f prime of x was e to the x minus 1, and f double prime was e to the x. Notice that e to the x is positive always, no matter what value of x we have. Since f pr double prime is always greater than 0, it means that our function is concave up everywhere which we can see um, very clearly in the graph over here. Our function is always happy. It's always concave up um, because of that, that f double prime is greater than zero. That's it for this lesson.